Okay, so I, I actually wanted to start off with the issue of immigration. Um, Absolutely. You are the daughter of Greek immigrants. Legal immigrants, um, yep. Legal immigrants, correct. Um, and I want to see where you stand compared to Senator King, because Senator King um, has called for expansions to H-2B visas. He was a, a co-sponsor of the Asylum Seeker Work Authorization Act. Um, what do you think the place is of, of immigrants in Maine? Um, do you support those two policies that I just named? And what's your plan for immigration? Yeah, the H-2B visas, I, I support. My parents owned a restaurant for my mother for about 45 years. Oh, maybe, my goodness, I would say 50 years now um, till she passed away. And we would have, um, you know, folks coming from Europe and Russia working at the restaurant. So that's fine. I mean, we're okay with that. What we have is an unsecure border. And we have people coming through. We don't know who they are. We have child trafficking happening. We have drugs coming through, fentanyl killing, killing 73,000 people a year. So there are two different issues. One is, you know, you know, asylum seeking, coming through legally, you know, coming through our country and doing the process like my parents did, like my aunts did when they, my parents brought them over. I'm fine with that. What I'm not okay with is the Godaways, the, the you know, the, the bad folks coming from the border that are causing harm to our American citizens, and we need to secure that. So, so given that, I mean, do you think, broadly speaking, immigrants are going to play a crucial role in... Um you know, replacing Maine's workforce as as our aging population retires. Do you think do you think that's a solution? Is, is attracting more immigrants to Maine? I mean, I think it's always played, you know, a solution. Um, you know, we we had Canadians coming from Canada that populated Maine, right? We the southern part of Maine. We've had Greeks, Italians, Irish coming into our country, but to assume that we don't have families and children. Um, also playing a big part. I mean, my, my, my children are here. I have three granddaughters, and they're going to play a part, too. And just one last thing on the immigration issue. Absolutely. The Asylum Seeker Work, work Authorization Act would make asylum seekers eligible to work uh, sooner because a lot of the um, asylum seekers in Maine come here, but they're not allowed to work yet. Do you support that kind Absolutely. of... Absolutely. So you do support... Absolutely. I, on, those, on those issues, I'm good with. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm not unhappy with is Senator King could have taken a stance, secured the border, uh, you know, 85,000 kids trafficked. That's horrible. Um, 73,000 people a year killed because of fentanyl. That's horrible. That should have also been a big part of his plan. That was not... Now, I want to move on to the issue of foreign relations. Um, Senator King um, visited Ukraine in mm -hmm. um, January of 2023, and he wore a sweatshirt of Joshua Chamberlain, a, a hero of the Civil War um, from Maine. Um, do you think that Ukraine's fight against Russia carries some of the same virtues that um, Chamberlain and, and the Union fought for in the Civil War? Or in other words, you know, how do you feel about American support for Ukraine against Russia's invasion? It's, it's a complicated issue, right? Um, we're, we're going in there and on the backs of the Ukrainians, they're fighting a large regime, which is Russian. And what we have to worry about is the escalation of war. You know, if we're going to support an ally like the Ukraine, what we should be doing is also trying to broker a peace. Uh, as a veteran myself, who's, who's lived it, you know, during the Cold War in Germany when the wall was still up there, I can tell you war is dangerous. We should never look for war. We should try to stop war. And I feel what we're doing is having a continuation, a policy of continuing war. So I would prefer you're going to support a, a um, country. I'm fine with an ally. I am fine with where that comes also trying to broker peace and trying to work towards a peaceful solution. Do, do you think that Russian President Vladimir Putin um, wants to recreate the um, borders of the original Soviet Union? Do you think that's his intention here? I do. So Absolutely. given that, do you think that brokering a peace deal is appeasement? I think appeasement is buying a lot of their oil and giving them a lot of money so they can continue with this war. And that's what we've done as Americans. We, we have allowed Russia to get wealthy 
from buying their oil. So we've supplied a lot of money to Russia and inadvertently allowed them to grow to the point where they think now they can take control. So do you think given that, that Russian sanctions, sanctions against Russia have not gone far enough. Exactly. And I think they're going to be, you're going to see it now getting stronger. And we should not be basically buying Russian oil or, or Europe should not be buying Russian oil. So your policy, if I'm getting this right, is uh, try to broker a peace deal with Russia while also trying to economically isolate them further. I, again, I'm a veteran. It's peace through strength, right? That's, that's always been the mantra of, of, of a superpower. You, you're strong, and yet you try to you know, achieve peace. And what we're not doing is doing that. We're continuing the war on the backs of the poor Ukrainian families that are trying to escape the conflict. I mean, to what end? We're, Ukraine is not going to win this war. Do we, does anybody think that we're going to beat this, that Ukraine's going to win this war? So I mean, it, it, what, what, what would you say to someone who, who argues that, you know, by giving Russia, for example, the Donetsk region, um, you are basically giving away um, Ukrainian families to uh, Russian dictatorship? Well, we're going to change the board. I'm not saying that, you know, we like that and we don't want that. But this war is not going to end with Russia being defeated. It's not going to be. So when you say change the border, would you push for a peace agreement that does give Russia part of the modern borders of, of Ukraine? I think, I think there's a lot of strategies. I'm, I, I'm not a diplomat. And I, I'm, I'm a veteran instead. I can talk to you about how, how basically the, the military should work. It should be a strong military. We should show our proudness. We should go out there and say, stop it right now. We've, uh, we knew they were lining up on that border, and we did nothing. But, but just, I just wanted to ask again, just to clarify, do you feel that um, Ukraine should maintain the territorial integrity that it had before the war? Or I, are you comfortable with giving away part of that land? Okay. I would love for Ukraine to have its original border. What I don't love is the death and destruction that is happening in any conflict throughout the world. As a mother, as a grandmother, as a veteran, I hate the conflict. And it looks like all we're doing is extending the conflict. I do not believe for one second that Ukraine will, there's not a general out there that says Ukraine will win this war. I want to move on to Senator Collins um, and the nature of your relationship with her. How did she figure into your decision to run, and how is she supporting you now? Oh, I'm um, Senator Collins, and I have a great relationship. She called me up. We just chatted for about an hour, and then she said, you know what I think you should do? I think you should run for U.S. US Senate. And, and she was the number one factor for me deciding to run. And, um, you know, whenever I see her, we're very cordial, we talk. Um, I haven't had a chance to go to Washington, D.C. to visit, but I will be making that happen soon enough. Um, but we have a great relationship. What, would, you have, would you have run without her urging, do you think? No. No? No. So I want to move on to the issue of abortion. Um, where do you stand personally first, and then um, what national restrictions, if any, would you support um, on abortion? Right. So I value life. I'm a health care provider. I also am a mom, right, who went through a difficult pregnancy, who had, through, you know, a high-risk pregnancy, uh, had miscarriages. So I understand the plight of pregnancy and the difficulties that that can bring. I, I will tell you, though, I think it is, I am not for a ban. I am for choice. So I probably stand more with Senator Collins on this issue. Um, I think, though, that we have to really allow women to have true choice, which means economic choice. A lot of women decide not to be able to continue on with their pregnancy because they can't afford to. We have an expensive state. We have a housing problem. We have uh, inflation that's taken a toll. We have a child care problem. My husband and I pick up our grandkids and help my daughter with her children. I mean, these are factors that play a huge role into, you know, to what extent do you want your family to grow? Can you be able to grow? Can, can a woman, uh, you know, afford to have a baby? Um, Prenatal vitamins should be accessible immediately. I think we should help these women make a, a true choice. Right now, they feel they have no choice at all. So what I'm hearing from you is you would not 
uh, vote in favor of any national restrictions on abortion. How do you feel, we're coming up on the two-year anniversary of the Dobbs decision, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the Supreme Court um, overturning Roe versus Wade? I think there is a lot of discussion to be had because there's been a lot of medical breakthroughs, right? We, it used to be, when, when I had my youngest and he came early, um, you know, if he came before 32 or 31 weeks or six months, we would say it, um, the, the baby didn't have a great chance of living. Now we know that even at 23, 24 weeks, which is five months, that baby can live and survive outside. So there's been a lot of medical breakthroughs. We need to go back and revisit. All the women I talk to, and I talk to a, a lot of women, a lot of women who are Democrats, right, um, because I am a moderate, um, and what they say is we're looking for solutions. We don't want to end pregnancies. We want solutions so we can make a better decision. I just want to clarify, though, what, what do you feel about the Supreme Court's decision to yeah. overturn Roe v. Wade? I think it needs, we need to have it come back to the state so we can go ahead and look at it again. Uh, the European model seems to be a very reasonable model, which, which allows for abortion to almost, I think, 15, 16, 17 weeks or so. I think that's reasonable. I think Again, it's not going to be up to Demi. It's going to be up to the people of the state of Maine to make that decision. So just, and then we'll move on. Uh, you are personally uh, pro-choice. However, you um, mm -hmm. believe that abortion policy should be in the hands of the state, so you do support the Dobbs decision. However, you don't support any federal restrictions on abortion. Is that a correct sum Yes, of I, I, I would like to see more avenues available to women who find themselves, because nobody loves that baby more than a mother. And I'm sure most women would rather have a true choice. We are not giving a lot of women choices. The other thing is if the baby, if the pregnancy needs to end and the baby is viable, maybe we should be talking about adoption instead of abortions. Uh, and that's where I think Senator King and I differ. Um, he's comfortable with basically, you know, abortion at the 39th week. If the baby is viable and can survive outside the mother's body, we should be talking about adoption. I have so many friends that would have loved to adopt a brand new baby. So I want to move to uh, the former president. Um, uh, in November of 2020, after um, President Joe Biden won the election, uh, in a statement, you said that you'll continue to full-heartedly support our president, meaning President Trump at the right. time, until all counting and litigation concludes. Trump, his allies, have filed dozens of uh, unsuccessful appeals in, in courts regarding the 2020 election. Will you now acknowledge that uh, President Biden did win the 2020 election? Oh my goodness, I acknowledged it years ago. Um, I believe in our justice system. I believe in America. My parents loved, you know, being able to come to this country and raising their family here. Um, once the appeals were all done and uh, President Biden, you know, had won the, the election and there was no overturning that, I wholeheartedly support President Biden. So given that, I mean, how do you feel um, pre former President Trump fits into the Republican Party? Do you think he's a force for good? Do you align yourself with his candidacy now in 2024? Because I don't, I don't subscribe to President Biden agenda. Uh, I'm, what about President, uh, former President Trump? Do you? Yeah, I, 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 I like his agenda. I like the, the fact that he wants to make the United States a little bit more prosperous for people like my family to be able to come here and open a business. I think that we need to secure the border. I think we need to make the, we need to make the economy a lot better improved so that people can buy homes. I just, real, I just saw an interesting uh, number. Since 2020, home prices have doubled. Who can afford, how, how many young people can come here and afford or immigrants come to this state and afford a house. But it, it, it's one thing to share conservative policies. It's another thing to support the man, the man who, um, whose supporters uh, invaded the Capitol at, at January 6th. You know, how, do you feel that he should take some responsibility, have some accountability for January 6th? I think that I would have liked him to tr probably have gone to the media and asked, you know, the media to say, people, get out of the way, don't do what you're doing. 
but he did never said that he wanted people to storm the Capitol. And I, and I, was, I, I wasn't even close to the Capitol, so I, I wasn't there. But I'm going to tell you, the people that did storm the Capitol broke the law. I'm never okay with breaking a law. I'm a constitutionalist. I'm a veteran. I care about our country, and that is just not okay for me. Do you view yourself as a, a Trump ally? I support his candidacy to be president. I support um, his agenda. Um, does that make me a Trump ally? I would say then does that mean that a person who uh, wants President Biden to win is a Biden ally? Uh, I suppose, I mean, it depends, I mean, you're missing words here. I like what he, what he's going to do for our country. And as a first generation American, I love this country and I want our country to prosper and do better than it is right now. And last question on, on the former president. I mean. Do you believe that his kind of an inflammatory rhetoric, his way of, of, of speaking about others, about his opponents, do you think that that is um, helpful for our democracy or do you think it's hurtful? Whoops. What row? I just don't want it to, to mess up things. That's sorry all. about that. I'm just going to turn this light. I was going to say, how about if the back light that you have standing up? That back one? That's also unfortunately broken. Oh. Yeah. No, it's not, not great. Oh, my goodness. Well, that gives me time to think. No, yeah. it's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and you'll be able just... to splice all this, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank God. Okay. You'll be in the dark. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, so, so back to this, this idea, I mean, do you think his, his rhetoric, his, the way he, he acts in right. the public sphere, do you think that's helpful to our no. democracy? No, I do not. I, 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 I'm not a boisterous, aggressive person. Um, you know, I, I'm in healthcare, right? I, I'm not that personality. Do I like his personality at times? Absolutely not. Uh, but, but, you know, I've told everybody, I, I, I know I've told my party when I was chair many a times, my husband and I didn't get a, don't get along sometimes. Uh, we didn't always agree about child care, when, uh, child rearing when, we, when our kids were young. Uh, so we don't have to agree with people all the time. We don't have to be like, you know, alike all the time. We can accept people for who they are, like it or not, um, just like we do with relatives and family members um, and friends at times. Uh, but, but I think our country is just going in the wrong direction, and I think President Biden has not done a great job with this country, and I want our country to do better. And I want to move to the issue of trade. I, I think it's so interesting how both parties have, have switched on the issue of trade, you know, right. from, from Clinton and Reagan, who were free traders, to now, you know, former President Trump and President Biden are both, you know, have pushed through tariffs and, and, and kind of um, aggressive right. protectionist policy. Where do you stand on this issue? And, and I, I want to ask this question with Maine in mind. You right. Know, we, we've had right. Um, a lot of our industrial base has gone uh, over the last half century. Um, what trade policies do you agree with and how do you think that would translate to greater economic prosperity in Maine? I think originally when, when there was a lot of trade going on, you know, years ago when we had the, you know, we had NAFTA and everything else, I think that we were looking to, United States was looking to prosper as well as other countries. But what we've, we have for now, what's happening now is we have Mexico, which has cheaper labor. We have China that has almost enslaved labor. And so it's, it's cheapened the products and we can't compete, right? So we have problems with fisheries. We have problems with logging, pulp and paper, textile industries that have caused a lot of problems and lost a lot of high paying jobs in our, in our state, right? I will always vote to make sure that we have, um, you know, practices in place to help Mainers and higher paying jobs for Mainers because we really do not have any, 70% of everybody that's employed in the state of Maine are employed by small businesses. We don't have any manufacturing. We don't have the pulp and paper 
companies are struggling, right? So, so that's how I feel on the trade issue. So does that translate to support for high tariffs? Do you think we should be raising our tariffs? And if so, by how much? I, that's, that's a very complicated issue. And I mean, we have the best economists in the world working on these issues, and they have yet to be able to solve it. But I think we need to bring more manufacturing back to the United States. It'll cause things to get a little bit more expensive. But we have also a supply issue with China. They do a lot of our foods. They do a lot of our medication. And we know during COVID, we were, we were losing medication. We didn't have medication in this country. Antibiotics were in short supply because of China. And the standards that China has compared to the United States is an issue in itself. So we need to really look at this issue. I am not an economist. Um, but I can tell you right now, I will always work to help the people in Maine. We need to bring jobs back here, and, and we need to maybe add a little bit more tariffs. By the way, Trump put tariffs in China, and President Biden kept those tariffs in place. I want to go to your opponent, um, Senator Angus King. Right. Um, how do you feel... If you feel this, where do you feel he's he's maybe gone wrong that you would um, correct if, if you were right. senator? On yeah. what issues do you really feel that, that he's in a different place than you are? Absolutely. First of all, he's not independent. He votes 98.5% of the time with the Biden agenda and the, and, the, and the Biden vote. You know, all of the economic agendas that, that Biden put forth that actually has now caused the inflation and the expense that Maine people are dealing with, Angus King voted with them. So he can't, he, he can't deny that. He's not an independent. Susan Collins, Senator Collins is more independent than Angus King. So we gotta make sure that people understand that, right? So second of all, um, he, he's claiming that he's concerned about housing in the state of Maine. Where have you been? You've been in, in Senate for 12 years and you haven't fixed these problems. We need sometimes change. We need new blood. And if I get in there, I will make Maine my number one priority. So what is your plan to address the, the housing shortage that we have in Maine? Well, for, for one thing, we've got too much red tape. My son is in real estate. We've got too much red tape. We can't get construction up and going. Second of all, it's very expensive. Third of all, we have stopped a lot of the educational processes so that we can have more people in industrial lots to be able to build con contractors, plumbers. We're in short supply of people that can build homes here in the state. And, and if we want to have, let's just say, more legal immigrants in the state, we have to provide housing for them. And right now we, have, we don't even have that happening. So I would immediately try to remove some of the red tape get more construction and get more people that can do construction and we have to lower the interest rate so that people can afford. Right now, I was talking to this nurse, her husband's a physical therapist, they have a little one-year-old baby, they're paying almost $3,000 a month for a two-bedroom uh, apartment. I mean, how can you get, and they want to expand their family and they can't afford that. So how do you expand? How do you, how do you make the main, main more prosperous? We have to go ahead and change the, the, if you will, the laws that have been passed in this state that has suppressed the, the main, Mainers in the state. Uh, my, my, my last kind of question, um, you know, we're coming to the end of, of Pride Month. Um, do you feel that the Republican Party has, has done enough to be a, a place where LGBTQ voters can, can find a, a political home, so to speak? I believe so, and I think uh, President Trump has also embraced, uh, you know, the, the gay uh, and trans community. Um, they, they do the log cabin. You know, it's controversial to some people down in Mar-a-Lago. I can tell you, as far as I'm concerned, never mind that it's law, but as f from, from where I sit, adults can do what they wish and what they, and they can be with whoever they want. I, I, you know, I, my, one of my best friends is, is, is a, a woman who is gay, and we've talked about a lot of issues. That is not an issue for me. Very last question, I, I promise. Um, how important is um, bipartisanship to you? Obviously, Maine's two senators, one's an independent, one 
um, is seen as a very bipartisan, Senator Collins. Right. If you were elected, right. how important would it be for you to be able to work with both parties? Absolutely. I, I'm more in line with Senator Collins in my approach to politics anyways. And, I mean, there's a reason why she called me up and asked me to run, because she knows how I stand. She knows how I, uh, how I respond to issues. I'm, I will always be bipartisan. I will only look for what's best for Maine and for this country. Um, and, again, you know, being a first-generation legal immigrant, I love this country, and I wanted to continue on for our... The American dream is in trouble at this point, and we want the American dream to be there for our grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and that's why I am running for uh, U.S. Senate for the state of Maine. Great. Thank you so much.